Hi, everybody. I'm David Gertler. I'm really excited to be here today. Um, I've got a few prepared remarks, and then hopefully we can have some uh, Q&A. Um, and again, you can turn on your audio uh, at some point when you want to ask a question or put something in the chat. Uh, but the focus of my talk today is about networking in social media and helping you to grow your business through networking. So a little bit of my background, you can read it online, et cetera, but that's me in a nutshell. Let's get to the good stuff, right? Um, what's the main disconnect that people have when it comes to networking, right? What they want is the phone to be ringing off the hook, right? That they got tons of business, new opportunities coming in with very little effort, right? But what they typically do uh, when they are using social media is just, you know, like things or push out self-serving promotions on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you know, all the usual. Uh, and of course, the results tend to be less than what they're looking for, what people are looking for. So if that's a pretty common thing for you, then you're in the right place because I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how you change this, right? So if you think about it, Marketing and networking are two very different beasts. And unfortunately, a lot of people conflate the two. They think that by posting material on social media, it's really networking, but it's actually not. There's nothing wrong with marketing, but marketing is essentially taking a message and sending it out to as many people as possible, right? That's what happens when you when you're marketing. You're taking a message, you're pushing it out. And again, it's very easy, it's very comforting. And people tend to do that with all the typical social media platforms, but it's going to be a needle in a haystack kind of thing, right? If you send out a thousand messages, maybe you get a few, a handful of people that come back to you and say, hey, I'm interested in your product, your service, you know, whatever the opportunity is. Whereas networking really is the antithesis. Networking is in a way the diametrically opposite uh, phenomena, right? It's picking up the phone, making a phone call to somebody who knows you, who has a relationship with you, who trusts you, uh, that's willing to take the time to help. So if you think about it, you can make, and I'll just use the analogy of a phone call, right? Uh, but you make one phone call to a trusted person and you say, hey, I can use a favor. Can you help me out with this? And the person says, oh, sure thing, David. Let me, let me see what I can do. They make a couple of phone calls or emails. They reach out to some people that they know and trust. And then ultimately you get a lot of really positive results that happen. My point here is that marketing and networking are complementary. You don't necessarily have to sacrifice one to do the other, you can do both, but think of them as very different kind of beasts. When it comes to, again, most people's experience on social media, they think that the goal is to collect as many connections as possible. And again, from a marketing perspective, you want your message to go out to as many people as possible, that's fine. But when it comes to networking, it's a question of quality, not quantity. You might have 20, 30, 100 people that you can turn to and you can say, hey, I need a favor. And those 20, 30, 100, 200, whatever that small number is, will be much more effective than the 2,000, 5,000, whatever it is, number of people that you're connected to on the various social media platforms. So you really need to think that, you know, it's a very different mindset when you're trying to network on social media versus just market yourself on social media. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about a, a personal journey for me, right? Um, years and years ago, I was unemployed after the tech bubble burst in the late 90s. And um, my phone wasn't ringing, right? Uh, uh, I, I, prior to that, I was always getting recruited. And so um, somebody gave me advice. They said, you got to network. And as an introvert, uh, that just made my skin crawl. Like, you know, how do you network? What is that? Handing out business cards, you know, meeting people for lunches, you know, what is all this stuff, right? And I put myself through some intense uh, training. Uh, I spoke to a lot of people, read a couple of books and just met people. And I learned a few important things. And the first is um, this aha moment uh, that I had, which is that networking is about building and leveraging your trusted business relationships for long-term mutual benefit, right? And hopefully that, that kind of sinks in, right? It's not, I need a job, you know, here's my resume, or I'm looking for some new clients, you know, here's my business card. It's, you know, getting to know people, understanding that it's a long game. It's a long, slow process to build a valuable network, and it's going to take time. And whereas 
many times people are in just an amazing rush to find that job or find that new client or a deal or get some advice. Networking is really about long-term building relationships. So really important. I also learned a few other things that I'd like to share along the way as well. So my you know, personal networking philosophy, right? Think of networking as building long-term relationships for mutual benefit, right? It's not just for you, look for ways to help others. And there'll be times where it will be asymmetric. There'll be times in which you can help others, but they might not be able to help you or you know, they can help you, but you can't quite help them. That's okay. Um, but if you think about it as a long game and, and just an aggregate, um, that's important. Also to consider that there's this general sense of goodwill. People will remember how you treat them and if you're sincere and offer to help, that will go a long way. And um, you, what you're really trying to do in the back of your mind is create as much goodwill as possible. And I'll expand upon that in a few more slides. The other key tenant of my networking philosophy is you know, the key secret that made me somewhat successful in networking and opened up tremendous opportunities for me personally and professionally was that I always tried to help other people first. Rather than saying, you know, here's my business card, here's what I'm looking for, I would always try to get to know the person, build a relationship, and I almost always ask, you know, hey, what are you up to? What can I do for you? Is there anything that you need right now? And many people are polite and say, no, 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 thanks. But say, hey, look, I'm very sincere. You know, I can't help you if I don't know. And I'll tell a story about that in a few moments. But if you think about it, networking is about helping others first. And if you help that person, you're going to tap into this power of reciprocity. People are going to want to help you in return. And that's much more effective than walking up to a stranger and saying, here's my business card. And the last key piece of my philosophy is you have to know exactly how to help. And that's, that can be a big challenge, right? You know, many people are polite and you say, hey, what can I do for you? And they'll say, oh, no, I'm fine, right? But it might turn out that if you got to know the person a little bit more, you might discover that there are specific things. Uh, so, you know, an example might be, uh, that person has a son or daughter that's thinking about going to college at your alma mater. And unless you explore that, they might not realize that, hey, you have great insights. Uh, I actually served on the board of trustees for my alma mater years ago, and I was able to help a number of, of young people understand what my school was about and whether it was a good fit for them. That doesn't always come out as obvious when you get to meet somebody in a business setting. Most often you're talking about clients and customers and deals. But imagine being able to help that person with simpler things that are perhaps even more impactful than looking for a new job or a client. So understand how you can help people is super important. All right, with that framework is, right, my goal is to build these long-term valuable business relationships. How do I do it? So first, you need to gain some insights about people, you know, chat with folks, get to know them, look at their bios online, right? Try to learn a little bit about that person ahead of time. And with an eye toward how do I help that person? What are they up to, right? And again, a lot of times I just directly ask. Also, I think it's important to let people know in a non-salesy but direct way, what can they do for you, right? If you're looking for a new client, whatever, just say, hey, by the way, I'm looking for your clients. As long as it's not a hard sales pitch, you know, because we all get too many of those already. The other key uh, thing that you should consider is that as you create goodwill, as you're out helping other people and making a difference in their lives, you're really building an army of advocates. You're building this huge number of people that have you in the back of their mind because you've helped them. And now they're looking for ways to help you in return. And that's a tremendous multiplier effect, as especially in the business world. Switching gears, right? Pre-COVID, when we used to do things in person, and hopefully as we're able to do things in person in the near future, um, one of the biggest challenges that I had as an introvert was walking into a networking event and seeing all these strangers and, you know, what do I do and how do I approach people and what do I say and all that, right? So it was really a, a challenge for me. And the way I got through that was to really do a little homework on people. And, you know, my company Treble is all about this, but the idea is, I don't need to meet everybody in the room. What I'd like to do is quickly and easily meet a few people in the room and discern in, in short order, you know, does, do I have things in common with this person? Can I help this person? Can this person help me? Can I build a relationship with this person? So I'm only looking for a few people to get to know because again, 
it's not a marketing effort, it's a networking effort. So I want a few people with a deep relationship rather than just handing my business card out to every single person in the room. So spend the time to meet a few rather than try to meet the ideal person uh, because it's almost a challenge. Switching gears to um, uh, virtual events. So you know, uh, Zoom and other similar technologies allowed uh, uh, people to network through, um, you know, at the comfort from their own home. But the problem there is you got all this noise. And one of the things I always chuckle about is in, in networking chat sessions, you often find people putting their personal contact information into the chat window with the hope that, you know, somebody's going to call them, right? And, and invariably, I've been in tons of these, you know, Zoom virtual networking events. And I don't know if anybody's ever looked at the chat text but on the slide you'll see i've got a couple of them that's what it looks like nobody's doing that nobody is i don't think anybody is saving that chat window and then going back through it and reading it line by line and looking at people's names and phone numbers and making those emails nobody's doing it there are better ways and again you know, treble without talking too much about my company we've got a better way to do that than than this because it just doesn't work right so how do you make the most of it um, if you're in a virtual uh, uh, setting? First, it's important when people, if they do have the opportunity to introduce themselves, to listen actively, take notes. I always keep an iPad next to me and I always that write down and jot some notes. You know, somebody says something interesting or they mention where they work or they mention something that they can do or interested in doing. I'm always actively looking for ways to make those connections. Second, at the event, whether it's in person or virtual, I'm thinking about the follow-up, right? The real magic happens outside of the call. So I don't worry so much about making that critical first impression at that event or trying to close a deal at a Zoom session. It's make enough, get a sample. I'd like to think of it as a smorgasbord, get a sample of each person, as many as you can, to decide which ones I should follow up with, what should I talk about, how do I approach. And again, it's about altruistic business networking. It's building relationships and you do that one step at a time by trying ways to help those people. Hey, Sally, I noticed that you mentioned that you're looking for, you know, you're a wealth manager, you're looking for clients. I know some people, I'd be happy to learn more about your practice and see in my travels if there are people that can help you, right? And if I do that for a number of people, they're all going to be appreciative and they're all going to have time and many of them are going to want to help me in return. <clears throat> um, when it comes to social media, right, one of the biggest challenges that people have is it's easy. It's almost too easy, right? You can like things till the cows come home. You can take graphics and, you know, presentations and all kinds of material and upload it from the comfort of your home. You can do tons of it, but it gives you this false sense of security. There's, you know, you're pushing out a lot of information, but somehow the phone's not ringing, right? So you have to really think about in terms of networking that it takes work. It takes effort. And technology won't replace the effort that's necessary to build relationships. It'll help. You can look people up. You can get a sense of what they're doing or where they are or you know, what they might need or how they might help you. But it doesn't take the place of building real relationships. Um, I'm going to tell probably just um, maybe tell just one story. Uh, uh, to see how time goes. And again, if you have uh, questions, put them in the chat room. And if I have time at the end, I'll either tell another story or I'll, I'll um, uh, answer some questions. But I'll tell a story um, that underscores uh, one very specific thing. I was at a networking event. This is years ago. And during introductions, as we went around the room, uh, one of the things that you had to answer was, what do you need right now? And at the time, I was chief operating officer of a, a mid-sized software company. I didn't really need anything, but I felt like I had to say something. And so I said, um, I've got a daughter who's a freshman at Virginia Tech, and she's studying electrical engineering. So you know, maybe next summer, she'll need an internship. Six people raised their hand. Six people said, hey, David, you know, I'm hiring, or I know somebody, or get me her resume. I'd be happy to help. And the reason that happened wasn't because I posted tons of stuff on social media. The reason that happened was because I built relationships and I had helped a lot of these people in the past. So they felt an obligation almost to help me in return. And some people are just generally altruists. And sure enough, within about three weeks of me 
saying that, um, my daughter had a few different great opportunities and she landed an amazing internship October of her freshman year. And it never would have happened had I not brought that up in this meeting. So, you know, be direct. That's kind of the point of this particular story. You know, don't be afraid to just be polite and, and direct at the same time. Um, I'll tell one more story uh, about boldness. And this is my, one of my favorites as well. So years ago, I was looking for a, a job and I had noticed on a, a, a forum that this one particular company was thanking their president and chief operating officer for his service as he was stepping down. So I naturally assumed that they were gonna look for a new president COO. I did a little homework on the chairman of the board and learned a little bit about him. Uh, took a wild guess that his email was going to be first name dot last name at company.com, very common. And I sent a note, you know, a traditional cover letter, you know, applying for the position. But I had learned that he had his master's degree from MIT in electrical engineering, and he had his MBA from the Harvard Business School. Um, well, I have my MBA from the Wharton Business School, and I have a master's in electrical engineering from Johns Hopkins. So at the very end of my email, I just put in a little snarky comment, which was, you know, um, hey, I've noticed you've got your bachelor's, uh, you've got your master's in double E from MIT and your MBA from Harvard. Too bad you didn't go to good schools like I did. And sure enough, I get a phone call maybe minutes after I hit send. And he called me up. I felt like I was being called to the principal's office in high school, right? And he said, get your butt down here right now. And the position didn't quite work out, but we became really good friends. And so the point of the story is, you know, in networking, as you're meeting people, and I hadn't, didn't have any connection to them whatsoever, don't be afraid to be a little bold, right, to try different things and to reach out. And some people, you might hit them at the wrong time, or it might be a bad, uh, a bad day, or a person might just be busy. Uh, but nevertheless, don't be afraid to put a little bit of your personality into your networking and be bold. Um, let me move on and, and I want to try to summarize and make sure we have a few moments at the end just for any questions that people might have. Um, so networking is really about building relationships, right? It's about a long game. It's thinking about where you want to be in a few years, not I need something immediately. And like most relationships, personal or business, it takes time, it takes effort. Um, it doesn't just happen because you go onto somebody's LinkedIn profile and click like, right? If you help other people and put them first and get to know them, they're much more likely to want to reciprocate. I can't tell you how many times, and I'm sure this happens to everybody, I can't tell you how many times I get an inbound request on LinkedIn, you know, and if I accept them, the next thing I know, they're just selling me something, right? Um, if you think about it, who would you rather do a favor for? Somebody who you've known for a while, who's helped you, or some absolute total stranger? Again, there are a lot of altruists out there, but nevertheless, it's, it's important to know that you're going to get a lot more value out of people that you've helped and generated goodwill with and been there for. Um, and then the last point, like I mentioned, is, you know, be direct and honest, right? Let people know, hey, by the way, I'm looking for, you know, leaders of business networking organizations that might want to join Travel, or I'm looking for an investor that has a vision that coincides with where we want to be in a couple of years. So you can be direct without being salesy. And I think people appreciate that. Um, again, the most important thing, if you don't remember anything else, is it's about helping others. If you want to be successful, it's not about collecting connections and how many connections you have on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, that's marketing from networking. It's how you make people feel and they'll feel better if you take a sincere interest and you try to find ways to help that person. And for many of us, by helping others, you feel good and you end up generating this goodwill that comes back to help you. So I like to joke and say that it's like selfish altruism. I help others because it makes me feel good, but I also know in the back of my mind that by helping them, they're gonna want to help me in return. All right, one more, uh, one more piece of advice and then I see there are a couple of comments and questions I'll, I'll, I'll read in a second, right? One of the most critical things that most people do wrong on networking is they fail to follow up. I can't tell you how many times I get somebody who asks me for an introduction or referral. And I say, sure, let me introduce you to Sandeep. 
and the person doesn't call. Meanwhile, I've told Sandeep, hey, expect the phone call from Sally. And Sally never calls. And now it's a bad reflection on me because the next time I say, hey, Sandeep, I want to introduce you to Bill, Sandeep's going to give me a hard time because he's like, oh, is this going to be another one of those people that doesn't follow up? So think of your network as this incredibly valuable asset. And if you're going to share it with somebody, it's going to be a reflection on you. Because imagine the opposite, Sally calls Sandeep and Sandeep is blown away, right? And Sandeep says, hey, Sally was an amazing, Sandeep calls me and says, David, Sally was amazing, really wonderful person. Thank you for introducing me to, to Sally. And meanwhile, Sally is thrilled because I introduced them. So your introductions, your referrals can be incredibly productive or it can actually hurt you in terms of the way your network views you. So always understand that when somebody makes that referral, you have to follow up, you have to move forward with that. Um, I've got one or two more things, but I'd like to take a look before I, I know we're gonna run tight on time. I'll see if there's um, a couple of comments or questions. Um, and if people want to ask them verbally, you can unmute yourself and I'll be happy to answer some questions. But I'm just going to read through, I think there are a couple of comments in here. Um, Monica says, one method I use for chat networking is I click on the link right away so the tab is open in the background. I bookmark it, saving it into a folder for events and categories and revisit it by priority of current or future need. That's excellent. Um, I'll also share something that I do in Zoom many times. Like if I were not the moderator, I would look at some of the people's names, maybe look them up on LinkedIn or Treble, um, get a little bit of insight into the person, or maybe just set up a separate chat. Again, I don't have to meet all 20 people that are on this call. All I need to do is find one or two people that I decide whether or not to make a relationship with. So many times on Zoom meetings, I find it to be very productive, even more so than at physical events, because perhaps the speaker isn't that interesting, I'm not going to start whispering to my neighbor. I think that's rude. Whereas in a virtual event like this one, it is possible for you to set up a separate chat with somebody and say, you know, uh, hi, Monica, you know, that was a great point. I really like what you, what, by the way, what do you do? And, you know, is there anything that you need that I can potentially help you with, et cetera? So I think there's a tremendous opportunity that the technologies like Zoom provide us to kind of back channel and make those relationships as well. Teddy put in a comment that says, I always remind myself that networking is finding, developing, and nurturing relationships that mutually move people forward through life. Uh, I love that, Teddy, right? And again, that, that really fits into my core philosophy as well, right? You're, you're not only helping yourself, but you're also helping others. And again, people, uh, I have found that most people will respond very kindly. There's a book by Adam Grant, called Give and Take. And if you haven't read it, I would recommend it. Adam is a Wharton professor. And in the book, uh, his research has showed that roughly 10% of the population are givers, pure altruists. 10% are takers, that you know, they're there to take what they can from others. But 80% of the workforce are scorekeepers, people that kind of track either explicitly or in the back of their mind, hey, I did three things for you, you owe me a favor. Right. Or I've done four things for you. You've done one thing for me. You know, hey, when do we settle this up? Right. And so because an overwhelming majority of people are scorekeepers, you know, be aware that if you help them and you run a, a, a credit in that ledger, they're going to look for ways to settle the score. They're going to want to reciprocate. So I call that tapping into the power of reciprocity. And again, there are pure altruists out there as well that if you ask for a favor, they'll say, hey, sure, if I can help you, they will. Then with the takers, you know, you're probably not worth spending your time on them. Uh, and part of my mission with Treble is to make the world a little bit more altruistic, to get that 10% up to maybe 11%, 15%, 20%, you know, something more. Um, and let's see, uh, Michael has a question. In networking your service, where do you draw the line in helping someone with advice or selling your service? Uh, I think that's a good question, Michael, right? I think... At the end of the day, there are times where, uh, and I'll draw upon something that happened to me recently. There was a wealth manager that said, hey, David, I'd, I'd love to help you manage your wealth. And I joked and I said, what wealth, right? Um, 
And she said, look, I'll be happy to roll up my sleeves and offer you some advice, you know, free of charge. I just want to assist. And we had a general conversation about that. And she never really pushed uh, for me to sign up as a client. But nevertheless, it gave me a sample of who she is as a person, how she approaches things. And it, it was just really nice, right? And I contrast that with somebody who, you know, I, I get emails from another wealth manager you know, every other week, you know, when can we sit down and talk? You know, I have a solution, you know, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? And it's, it's very, it feels more salesy. So I would say in your, in your approach, if you really are trying to put that person first and you're thinking more about what can I do to help them? And oh, by the way, I'll give a free sample. Um, as long as it comes across without the strings attached, I think that that's very well received. Um, but if it, it feels more like I'm selling the person, I'm selling a the person, then you're really not networking, you're just selling. Um, so good question. Uh, let's see another comment. Um, I proclaim up front how much I'm going to give away. Uh, hold on, let's see if I can scroll down a little bit. That uh, Good. Uh, being a scorekeeper can set you up for failure. Um, yes and no. Uh, the research showed that, um, you know, well, I'll, I'll let you read Adam Grant's book. But, you know, I think personally, I think many people flow between altruists and takers and givers. I think at any given moment, people kind of, you know, change and adapt to the environment. Uh, but again, as it comes to your your space on social media, one of the more interesting uh, stories I'll, I'll share with you in the last minute or two that we have is years ago, I ran for public office and um, I put a big sign on my car, right? You know, David Gertler, I was running for the school board and I had these giant signs on both sides of my car. Well, it made me a better driver because all I could think about in today's world is that, you know, I run a red light or I cut off a school bus, you know, uh, uh, and then somebody captures it and it goes all over social media. Knowing that I was subject to that much scrutiny just made me, I think, a better driver, a more conscientious citizen. And I think the same thing comes in the networking, right? We all have online presences. We all connect to lots of people. There's a tendency to want to say things anonymously. But if you think that anything that you say can and, and may end up on the front page of the local newspaper, I think it gives us all more pause to what we say. And if you're a little more kind, that will ultimately pay you better dividends than if you throw out that you know, nasty comment. So, uh, so I think scorekeeping is OK. Um, but I do think there is, and the research shows that being altruist generally leads to much better outcomes. Um, but it's okay to be, in my experience, a selfish altruist as well, or have a little bit of those tendencies. Any other last questions in the final seconds that we have? Um, again, happy to help. It's good to see some, I recognize a few familiar names here. I want to wish everybody a wonderful day. Um, and if I can help in any way, please feel free to connect with me. And if I can help, I will. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, be well.